If you are a recently engaged couple, I first just want to say congratulations. This is one of the most exciting times in your life, but it's also one of the most stressful times in your life. I'm sure you have a million things running through your brain about your wedding day, your bridal shower, bachelor and bachelorette trips. I totally get it. I am a bride myself. I'm getting married in three months and there's a lot that goes into planning a wedding. However, some of the best advice I've gotten during engagement season is to, yes, plan for all of these events and your wedding, but don't forget to plan and prepare for your marriage and what life will look like after the big day. You and your significant other may have already sat down and planned out what your goals look like for the next year or five years or what have you, and maybe you haven't yet. A common goal with newly engaged or newly married couples is when they're going to purchase their first home together. And in this video, I'm going to go over how to prepare to purchase a home in one year. So let's dive into it. First things first is how much money does it take to buy a home? That's a great question. So I'm gonna run some numbers with you guys based on the average home in my town, which is St. John's, Florida, and I will run an example here with you. Alrighty, let's run some numbers. We're gonna base all these numbers off a $400,000 single family home. So we have the purchase price of $400,000. The two biggest costs that comes to purchasing a home is your down payment and your closing costs. They are two separate things. So let's go over the down payment first. The down payment options are dependent upon which loan you choose to go with. So there are three different types of loans. There is a VA loan, which of course is 0% down, but not everyone qualifies for that, of course. There's also an FHA loan, and the minimum down payment for this loan is 3.5% of the pur purchase price. So if you were to take an FHA loan on a $400,000 house, that would be $14,000 for your down payment. And the last type of loan is a conventional loan. And the minimum down payment for a conventional loan is 5%. And 5% of $400,000 is $20,000. For our example, you would need between $14,000 and $20,000 at minimum to purchase a $400,000 house for your down payment. Now let's talk about the other portion of the cost of purchasing a home, which are your closing costs. These have a lot to do with your lender fees. So paying for an appraisal, loan origination charges, all of these things, including taxes, HOA dues, all these things are lumped into your closing costs. And it's important to find a good lender to work with to help walk you through them and also minimize them. Every lender is gonna charge different fees, although some fees are the same, no matter what lender you work with, some of them will differ. So what I tell my buyers to save for closing costs is between another three or 4% of the purchase price. So if we're on a $400,000 house again, then I would recommend saving between 12 and $16,000 just for your closing costs. So for the low end of our example, you'd be looking at saving $26,000 and at the high end would be $36,000 to purchase a $400,000 home. Now that may sound like a lot of money and don't get me wrong, it is a lot of money. That's probably what the average cost of a wedding is nowadays. So I'm going to give you a couple of quick tips on how to save money faster. My first tip is going to be go through your subscriptions. So you can either do this yourself or there are companies out there that will go through them for you. I guarantee there are a couple subscriptions that you signed up for that you completely forgot about and you don't use anymore. You can probably end up saving about 50 to $100 a month just by going through and minimizing what you don't need based on subscriptions. A couple of quick saving tips. So if you get a tax return or any bonuses this year, don't go blow that money, put that straight into savings. Next would be to pay attention to how much you're spending on food, whether it's eating out or making food at home. It can get expensive either way. I know the other day I just paid $8 for a dozen of eggs, <laughs> which sounds ridiculous. Whether you are a person that cooks and likes to cook at home a lot, make sure that you are purchasing groceries where you don't waste any food, you use everything that you purchase, and if you're eating out, just be conscious of what you're ordering and how much it costs. 
You can sell items that you no longer need. There's probably a ton of things from your wedding that you will never use again. So go ahead, put those on Facebook Marketplace, Poshmark. There's a ton of sites that you can sell used items on. If you're in the position to at your job, you can always ask for a raise. And if not, then I recommend trying to get a side hustle. There are plenty of online and remote working options that could make you a couple hundred or thousand more dollars a month on the side. Two other really important things to work on during this year is to work on your credit and also work on paying off any debt that you and your significant other have. There are several online resources to help you with your credit, but just a couple of basic things is make sure that you are paying off any credit cards you have. If you have any loans out, make sure you're paying them on time or ahead of schedule. Credit sometimes can just take time, but make sure you're doing your part and making sure that your credit can be as high as possible. Next, I would start searching online for homes. See what you like and what you don't like. If you are planning on buying a home in the town you already live in, then I recommend driving around. Where do you and your significant other want to be for the next five or so years? My last piece of advice is to start interviewing local realtors and local lenders. Realtors and lenders will make or break your home buying process. So don't leave it up to chance on who you end up working with. Don't necessarily go with the first person who's going to come up on your Google page. Start doing some research. See who is a top agent in your area who has great reviews. Look them up on Instagram. Look them up on YouTube. See what you can find out about them as a realtor and also as a person. You want to work with someone who you're going to get along with, who's going to educate you, fight for you, and at the end of the day, be a great resource for you. So I would go ahead and start that process. That way you narrow down what realtor and what lender you wanna work with whenever you're ready to start that process. If you have any questions on the home buying process, I am always here to help you. Even if you are not going to be purchasing in the area that I serve, I have connections with agents all over the country that I can connect you with and who would be a great place to start with interviewing your realtors or lenders. If you are looking to move to Northeast Florida, I cover the areas of Fernandina, Jacksonville, Orange Park, St. John's, and St. Augustine, Florida. And I would love nothing more than to chat with you about the home buying process. As always, if you have any questions, I'm going to leave my contact information on the screen and I just want to be a resource for you no matter where and when you want to purchase a home. Thanks so much for watching. Happy wedding planning and happy house hunting. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.